in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Acts, chapter 8. Get everything set up here. The lesson today is about baptism. Uh, we're going to look and see what the Bible says about it, and why we do it, when we should do it. Um, that reminds me of, uh, I was downstairs looking for something in my basement, and I saw a picture of uh, my family when me and my sister was babies, and it was, I know that picture is from when... Um, one of us, either me or my sister, was baptized as a baby in the Catholic Church, but that's not biblical baptism. <laughs> Basically, we just got wet, so uh, we're going to go through what baptism is, really what the Bible says about it. <coughs> so in Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 26, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in the chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Well, first of all, uh, notice that this man was, uh, he had already, he was going to Jerusalem to worship. So he was a religious man, but we'll see that he wasn't saved, but he will soon get there. Verse 29, then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he got saved there. And because, because Philip witnessed to him, and he got saved. And honestly, if you look back to um, <clears throat> verse 29, the Spirit said unto Philip, go near. And then verse 30, Philip ran. So Philip went like right as soon as the Holy Spirit uh, told him to go. So we, we got to remember that if um, we feel God's leading us to do something, we need to do it right then and not wait. Um not wait any time, we just needed to do it right then. Um, so he got saved. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So, um, First of all, baptism, the definition that I found uh, is to dip, to immerse, to submerge, to put under water, to cover completely. So the word baptized does not mean sprinkle, like probably what happened when I was a baby. I'm sure I got water sprinkled on me, but that's not the meaning of baptism. It means to go completely under water and also, it's for those who are saved. You don't get baptized first and then get saved. You get, you 
you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, and then you get baptized. So, Amen. Um, my baptism story. In 1985, not long after I asked Jesus to be my Savior, I was baptized. My mom was saved the week before. My sister was saved when I was. And my dad shortly after, maybe the following week. So the pastor who led us to the Lord said that to show obedience, we would need to be baptized, not for salvation, but it's an outward showing of an inward happening. It's a picture of what happened to you when you got saved. So my parents and I went to a church family's house and were baptized in their swimming pool. So uh, if anybody remembers from years ago, Kenny and Joyce Moore, that was their swimming pool we were baptized in. So um, I remember that. So that's the first step of obedience after you are saved. So the God commands us to be baptized in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. We read these um, a lot during a missions conference. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And in Acts chapter 10, verse 48, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they led him to tarry certain days. So uh, it's a command of God for us to be baptized. And we are to be baptized after we believe in Jesus Christ, after Amen. we are saved. That's when we're to be baptized. So in Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls and then in um, the, the text verse then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized and Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we see that the eunuch was saved, and then he, then he was baptized. Um, and also another uh, familiar passage in Acts chapter 16, verse 30 through 33. Um, we'll start in verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the house. And he said, and, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and was baptized, and he and all his straightway. And in Acts chapter 18, Verse 8, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. So they believed first and then they were baptized. Um, Acts chapter 8, verse 12, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So baptize, baptism is to happen after you are saved, and baptism is not to be saved. So, um, let's see, in 1985, my mom worked at Spick and Span Laundromat <coughs> off of Fair Avenue, West Fair Avenue, just behind Todd's Restaurant, if anybody ever remembers that. <coughs> She became friends with a lady who did her laundry there every week. Betty Smith was her name. She would invite my mom to church every time she saw her. My mom became so annoyed with Betty because she was inviting her all the time that um, she decided just to go to get her off her back. So then, of course, she got saved and the family got saved and we all uh, followed the Lord in baptism. And that's when we started going to church and uh, living for the Lord. So, Amen. Um, 
course, we are to be baptized by immersion. In Matthew 3.16, it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened <coughs> unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. So Jesus went straightway up out of the water. Of course, that shows that he was in the water. Um, again, Acts 8, 38, 39, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Romans 6, verses 3 through 5 says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are baptized with him by the baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So when someone dies, you don't sprinkle them with dirt, you bury them or immerse them in the dirt. Baptism by immersion pictures our position with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. So um, we also see that we are to be baptized immediately. We should not wait because uh, baptism is a command and when we're saved, we want to be obedient and that's the first step. Um, the first obedient step there is baptism after we're saved. Uh, Acts 2, 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word which when they gladly received the word, that means they were saved. They accepted that Jesus Christ was Savior. And when they gladly received his word, were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. <clears throat> Acts 16, verse 29 through 33. Uh, again, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Amen. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his house, he and all his straightway. So the Philippian jailer was saved, and immediately after he was baptized. And we also see that baptism cannot save anyone. Um, Jesus didn't baptize. And John 4, verse 1 and 2 says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees has heard, had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, and also Paul didn't baptize. In 1 Corinthians 1, 7 it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So, baptism cannot wash away sin, only the blood of Jesus does that. So, um, there are people who believe that baptism has to be done to be saved, but that is not biblical. Uh, Hebrews 9, 22 says, In almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission of without the shedding of blood is no remission. First uh, John 1 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses of us from all sin. So water from baptism does not cleanse our sin, but the blood of Jesus Christ does. Revelation 1 Five, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. <clears throat> so the blood of Jesus is what washes our sins away, not the 
baptism in water. Of course, baptism is what we do to show obedience to the Lord right after we're saved. So people were saved the same way in the Old Testament and as in the New Testament. Um, people were saved by faith. In Acts 10, 43, it says, To give to him give all the prophets, prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of remission of sins. Luke 750 says, And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. In Luke 18, 13, 13 and 14, And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to, to his house justified rather than the other. And in Luke 18, verses 41 and 42, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. None of these were baptized. The Bible said they were saved. Um, and we also see in the word of that water is a picture or a symbol of the word of God. I might be done really quick. Um, that's okay. We'll just talk slower. Um, John 3, verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Um, 1 John 5, 8, and there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he, had, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5, verses 25 and 26, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. John 13, 10, Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. John 15, 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And in Psalm 119, verse 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Um, only believing in Christ can save us. And again, not baptism. So John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And John 3, 15 and 16, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's a good verse to witness to people, to show them that if you have not believed in Jesus, you're condemned already. And, you know, there is a way for them. If they believe in Jesus, they are not condemned. So that's a good witnessing verse there. I mean, you can use all of them. Uh, John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. 
Baptism is commanded of God. It is the first step of obedience after one is saved, and baptism does not save. Um, so if you want to be obedient to God, we, we need to, first of all, be saved. And then when you're saved, the first thing you need to do is be baptized. And that baptism shows to the world, to the people in the church, to your family, that what has happened to you inside. Um, in Matthew 21, I was looking for a good... couple verses just to show obedience in Matthew 21 verse 28 through 31 if I can find it all right 28 through 31 and what think ye a certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said son Go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. And they say unto him, The first. So basically, um, as a kid, I would always say, I go do this or that for my parents, you know, or, you know. The chores that I was supposed to do, I'd say I'd do it, but then I wouldn't do it. But this is one of the verses that spoke to me, and like, uh, if you say you do it and don't do it, you're not doing it. You know, it's uh, for teenagers that might be hard to figure out sometimes, or kids. I'm talking to myself. I'm not pointing out anybody's kids, just me. Um, so, if we want to be obedient, we actually have to take that step and do that. And uh, also, seeing that the uh, Philippian jailer, his family, they um, were all saved because it said in the verses that, well, let me find the verses. Um, his family was saved also. In verse uh, 32, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Um, but, I'm sorry, verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in all thy house. So he believed, and all of his house was saved. And I gave you the uh, story of my mom. She got saved, and what happened a couple of weeks afterwards, her family got saved. So um, that is something if you ask Jesus Christ in your heart and are saved, um, there's a chance that your family will become saved too. Not because of you, but your, your witness and your testimony and the drawing of the Holy Spirit will draw them to you. Uh, boy, I hate to get done this early. Uh, let me just go over. Baptism is a command of God. We are to be baptized after we believe in Jesus Christ. We are to be baptized by immersion and immediately after salvation. And baptism cannot save us. And uh, just remember, your family's watching you. Um, I'm going to have to get done early. I don't have anything else. I thought I had a lot of notes, but uh, you're dismissed. Just pray for services. Pray for all those who are sick, not feeling well. And just uh, smile at everybody and say hi.